This is a uh, partial collection of the uh, pictures from uh, photos from our summer of 2021. First, not let's forget mom passed away December 23rd. She was in Newport Beach and a loving family around her December 23rd, 2021. The first is a group of uh, photos of a visit by Paul made during the time uh, my mom was in hospice. But uh, maybe these pictures will turn it into a happier note. It's good to see people together and uh, really enjoy being with them this time, like usual. But it, it was fun to have family around and, and good for all of, the, of us to have them there. It's Kaylee and myself at the carport, my dad's. This is a world. There's dad and the four kids with the mask on due to the COVID Omicron variant, like about the 19th variant to come through there. Uh, United States, so we're all covering up with our face masks. It's in the game room in the uh, leisure world that I enjoy a lot, playing bumper pool. There's playing Leslie and Kaylee playing foosball. And Jason uh, also came to the... Uh, House that day, and uh, we had a good time listening to Jason. Anyways, uh, this is when we first got to Minnesota. Uh, first thing we did was we uh, went out to breakfast with Gary after he picked us up, and uh, then uh, about a day later, like I said, this is just a partial of the photos between us. We had gone on a night boat cruise right here. St. Croix River, St. Croix River, excuse me, and uh, then with Gary, you stayed at Gary's house the, the whole seven days each night. Well, one night we stayed up by Murrayfield and we went to uh, visit uh, Joanne. And here's my dad and Joanne about to embrace, uh, probably for the first time in about four or five years. They were very close uh, in age and close in uh, relationship and I was very glad that they could see each other in person and have a nice hug. And uh, this is at Elizabeth, Joanne's daughter's house in Maryfield, Minnesota. It's about two and a half hours north of St. Paul. Uh, some of my dad's other brothers and sisters also made the trip. Gary, of course, who we're staying with, and Sally uh, King and, and uh, his other, another sister, Judy Benkowski. Here's Joanne talking to the group after first getting there. And there's inside Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth Honlick lives in Maryfield, and they have a really big uh, a lot of land there and a beautiful home. And these are all pictures taken on the grounds. Uh, there's Joanne and Judy Benkowski. Joanne wore a locket with a picture, a photo, a black and white photo, of course. Of uh, her, her and my and dad uh, when they were youngsters, with a cute picture. She holds that picture dearly in a locket around her neck. This is inside Elizabeth's house. Entryway, one of the entryways outside. It looks more like a park than a just a regular yard. And there's a. A little, probably a little bit too much of a close-up of jo Joanne and I, but it's great to have a picture taken with her. It's a very soft-spoken, sweet lady, and I love her to death, so um, it was fun seeing her. Here's uh, Elizabeth talking to the group. They had a, she had a lunch prepared for her, so it was just excellent. And here's the uh, most of the group there. Um, from left, Judy Binkowski, Joanne, Sully King, Elizabeth. Gary and Dad right there on the right. A couple more outside Elizabeth's home. Like I said, this is two and a half hours north of St. Paul, above Brainerd. And uh, the temperature was quite nice that day. I have a feeling they probably have a few more uh, cool days ahead. I think uh, today was minus 12 or something. And I'm speaking to you in, uh, on New Year's Day, January 1st, 2022. We took a couple of side trips after we uh, met up with Joanne. Uh, these are some of the photos. We just went to a few towns and a couple of golf resorts along the lake uh, in 
northern Minnesota. We had pictures there of my dad and Joanne and outside one of the golf uh, course uh, resorts there amongst the one of the one, one of 10,000 lakes you can see right there ahead of you the blue water inside one of the uh, cabins there cabin uh, centers um, and uh, then on the streets the, the gals really enjoyed doing some shopping <laughs> they had a lot of small shops there in some of the cities in the outskirts of Merrifield and there's a uh, dad Joanne and Judy and uh, there's Elizabeth talking to Sally and Joanne and uh, there's a picture of three of the sisters Sally King Joanne Honlick and Judy Benkowski and here's a photo outside one of the cafes there and uh, from left to right Gary Barth my dad James Barth John Benkowski Judy Benkowski Joanne Honlick Sally King yep she's 83 83 years old <clears throat> yeah I don't believe it either okay and here up at Sally's house she had a nice dinner party one of the early nights of our trip, uh, my dad would, with uh, Sally there, what a perfect home. She keeps an impeccable order, uh, part of the living room there. And uh, this is on Lincoln Avenue in St. Paul, Minnesota. And uh, she's a very, very nice woman <laughs> and fun to talk to and, uh, and a great sister to my dad. And then to the end of the trip, uh, dad and I went on a uh, just kind of an old times uh, trip. Just he and I, and he showed me some of the uh, old places. This was the house where he was born, where he lived when he was born, up until about seventh grade. This was on, uh, in, I believe, Kellogg. I hope that's right. <laughs> Clark, <laughs> maybe Clark, I think it is. Um, but, anyways, and then the house he lived on uh, for most of his time as a kid. Uh, and uh, uh, both houses are looking pretty good. They've been kept up. They're obviously, older homes, but uh, that was uh, a family of 12. <laughs> Not all at the same time, of course, but uh, busy, busy houses growing up in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. So that wraps up that portion of the picture, too. I've got a few other things I wanted to show. Uh, after we left Minnesota, we drove back. Uh, a little bit different route. So it took one extra day to get back to California. We stopped at Mount Rushmore, where it was 80 degrees in picture, perfect weather, clear, and uh, what a magnificent view that is. Um, you can be there in person. Uh, really lucky to be out there, and, and uh, it wasn't very crowded, <laughs> and uh, it was a perfect day. So we enjoyed our trip to Mount Rushmore. George Washington, and then that's Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln. So right to left, Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, and uh, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington. And uh, I have a nice picture snap of myself, and uh, I really enjoyed going there. Um, once we... Uh, we're done with Minnesota. We had two other trips in in October, and uh, we went to Mount Zion National Park and Bryce Canyon, and I'll show you a few photos of those. Once you get inside, it was a three day trip, and it was a four day trip in three days. It was one day dedicated to Mount Zion, second day to uh, Bryce Canyon, and the third day to the uh, out forty five minutes outside Las Vegas is the uh, Fire, uh, uh, the name's escaping me, I'll think of it in a second, but you'll see the photos from it. It's, uh, it's quite a scene, and it's called Fire of Something, and, uh, I'll get that for you. Uh, it's a Mount Zion, you can tell right away, this is outside, on the outskirts on the bus coming towards and into Mount Zion, but then you can see right away that the landscape takes a real particular looking order um, once you get inside with the colors of the rocks, the formation of the rocks and the cliffs and uh, some light tones and darker tones but you 
you can really just tell that you're there by the colors and shapes and uh, beautiful day there too we were lucky the whole trip was about 80 degrees <laughs> just like when we went to minnesota so i um, mean dad walking along the trail at uh, mount zion and uh Magnificent views. It, this is what actually through this uh, rock formation. There's a tunnel that we went on. <laughs> it's really dark, really long, but uh, uh, fantastic to see all of it. And then uh, the second day of that trip was to, and we were staying at Mesquite, Arizona, the same hotel, um, all three nights. And then the second day we went to Bryce Canyon. We heard there had been snow overnight. And there was, in fact, snow overnight as the bus approached. And uh, one of the first viewpoints we went to was just absolutely remarkable. Uh, this is just one night of overnight snow on the first uh, first snow of the new season. I get that mixed up. I say year, but it's actually the first snow of the new season, which just makes it really nice to look at. This is one from one of the viewpoints. You think you're looking at a something that's colorized or, or, you know, a postcard that's been worked up to look better than it really is, but this is exactly how it looks when you get up there. Yeah, it was probably the coldest weather I've ever been in. It was minus, or it was 28 degrees, and I don't know if I've been in colder weather than that. It was snowing still a little bit when we got up there, so I saw snow. So I saw snow, I saw it snowing, and it was minus 28, and just some incredible shots here. Of Bryce Canyon. What a backdrop. That's an incredible shot there. Um, it's beautiful. You really can't believe it's surreal when you're standing up there on the viewpoints. And so that's Bryce Canyon, both in Arizona and both well worth the trip. Uh, Valley of Fire was uh, the word I was looking for. That was the final stop on the way back. Uh, it's just 45 minutes out of Las Vegas, but I don't think too many people know about it. Uh, the rocks have distinct colors and shapes as well. There's uh, writing notes from ancient civilizations on these. Where you see the black, it's hard to tell, but there's inscription on the black. And it's, it's like words or something, or meaning words, I guess. And... and uh, it's great that this stuff still there hasn't been ruined by humans. They're going to preserve it just outside of Las Vegas, the Valley of Fire. And uh, there's our bus driver, Richard. He's a great guy. He was our driver both for uh, this trip and uh, one later we took to uh, San Luis Obispo that I'm going to show you right now. The next trip was to, it was a, a bus ride to uh, Union Station, downtown LA, and then a bus ride, or then a train ride to San Luis Obispo. There's the uh, Union Station, went to Bob, along Bob Hope, or saw Bob Hope Airport off the side of the, uh, from the side of the train, and uh, then just some other photos of, of the Pacific Coast and the Pacific Ocean from the train. A little difficult to get great shots from a train, but you can generally see it's, uh, it's beautiful along the coast of California, as if most people don't already know that, <laughs> but this will prove it. And then uh, finally getting to San Luis Obispo and our destination for that trip. Um, while we were up there, uh, we took uh, a couple of day trips. We went first to uh, Coville Ranch where they breed uh, Clydesdales. They used to do it for the Budweiser commercials, but they don't have a contract with them now that's mainly for tourism um, and uh, it was fun to see the Clydesdales. The, the younger ones are kind of down where the visitors are and they have a huge land uh, area of property that the uh, older mature horses graze up on top of the mountain so I've got a, a couple of the other pictures that are a little better than that one but for now that's going to have to do with the Clydesdales. Um, we also stopped on a on our uh, bus trip back, we took the bus back to, to uh, Long Beach and uh, 
Seal Beach, Long Beach area, Seal Beach, we were dropped off at Long Beach, uh, but this is a few areas, um, a few spots that we stopped, stopped at on the way back from San Luis Obispo uh, to Seal Beach along the way. Um, I remember this place really smelled bad. They were cleaning it up in the morning a lot. There's a lot of farm animals there to see, and uh, it's still, uh, the kids showed up um, probably about a half hour after we did, and they had a heck of a time. They were so excited to be there, so the smell didn't bother them at all. This Half Moon Bay, uh, Dad was able to go down and collect a few rocks, and uh, he really enjoyed walking on the beach there. Obviously, it was uh, low tide, which made it not easy to see the driftwood collection. I don't know if they pick it up from time to time or, or it goes back out to sea, but uh, it's a neat place right there and a uh, beautiful spot just to kind of sit back and, and then absorb it, you know, everything. And we did that. And this is uh, more of the bus ride getting closer to Southern California. Um, and uh, then we also stopped, I guess, previous to those photos. Um, at Buttonwood, Buttonwood Wine Winery and Vineyard. Uh, not really exactly sure where this was, except it was on, on the uh, road. Uh, uh, hang on, on the way back. Hang on. Hang, hang on, please. <laughs>